Senator Paul, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Good to be with you, Judge. Uh, I'm uh, outraged, as you know, uh, that the House of Representatives has moved the ball forward uh, with respect to the Patriot Act, utterly disregarding its oath to uphold the Constitution, acting as if the Fourth Amendment right to privacy isn't there, behaving as if the requirement that only judges can issue search warrants doesn't exist, and making it a crime for the recipient of the search warrant to tell anybody as if the iconic phrase, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech, doesn't exist. Are you as aggravated about this, as fearful for our freedom as I am? Well, I guess what perplexes me is that uh, conservatives are very good at defending the Second Amendment, but I tell people all the time when I go to gun shows and gun rallies, I say, look, you can't defend the Second Amendment if you don't defend the Fourth Amendment and if you don't defend the First Amendment. So the Fourth Amendment is important. All the amendments are important, and we shouldn't give short service to the Fourth Amendment and just say, well, it's not that big a deal if judges don't sign warrants. It was a big deal, and John Adams actually said it was one of the most, one of the biggest things that got us started and headed towards uh, trying to break away from the British crown was that they were doing these writs of assistance where they would go into houses with only soldiers' orders, right. search for anything to make sure you were paying your stamp tax. And the colonists hated this, and this is one of the reasons we went to war with England. You know, it's very interesting, uh, Senator Paul, uh, the law that permitted, the, the British uh, law enacted by the Parliament that permitted British soldiers to write their own search warrants, as you just talked about, was arguably the last straw before the committees of correspondence got together and there was pretty much a consensus amongst uh, colonial leaders that they had to get the British government off their back. Fast forward 230 years and the popularly elected Congress authorizes federal agents to do the same thing that we fought against the British government because they were doing. The king and the parliament let British soldiers write their own search warrants. The Patriot Act lets federal agents write their own search warrants. Have we come 360 degrees? <laughs> Well, I think Americans would be more outraged if they knew how frequent this was and that it was being used against U.S. citizens. A lot of Americans think, oh, it's just people who are spies for other governments. The national security letters that are being signed by FBI agents, not judges, were used 200,000 times in the last 10 years. Now, there's another part to this, too. There's something called suspicious account reports that are coming out of your banks. Your bank is also looking into your records without a warrant, too. Two million times the banks looked into your records over the past two, 10 years. Two million times without asking any court or any judge for permission. They just looked in your bank account and then reported it to the government. And you know, the, the Constitution is pretty clear. It not only says that only judges can issue search warrants, it says they can only do so based upon probable cause of crime presented to them under oath. And then it says the search warrant must specify the person, the place, or the thing that the government wants to search and seize. The Patriot Act lets federal agents go to a telephone company saying, we want to listen on these lines without specifying to whom they want to listen. This is so blatantly against the oath that they took to uphold. Same oath that you took, same oath that I took when I was a judge. It's hard for me to imagine how anybody can, can enforce this law in good conscience. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, is that uh, some people worry, they say, well, how would we ever catch terrorists? Could we get warrants? Before the Patriot Act, tens of thousands of warrants, maybe hundreds of thousands, were given by the FISA court, and very rarely did the judges ever turn them down. What happened is when 9-11 happened, they said, oh, we have to act, we have to do something. And they, they still say it here in Washington. They say, oh, we could have gotten the 20th hijacker if we'd had the Patriot Act. But they won't tell you the truth. The truth is they never ask any judge for a warrant to right. search Masawi's computer. They didn't do their job, and so they blamed it on not having enough laws. But in passing new laws, we had to give up the Fourth Amendment. Switching gears, uh, this morning the president introduced his budget. Uh, last week, when we thought he was going to introduce it, or two weeks ago, when you introduced your marvelous budget-cutting uh, proposal, we thought that the imbalance would be $1.48 Now it turns out it's $1.6 trillion. That's what the president says he'll have to borrow in order to make ends meet. A, are you surprised by that? B, since his borrowing is now bigger, is your budget-cutting bill now going to be bigger? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, I'm not surprised. I think the thing is with the president 
is that we had this election, and you say, well, he's got to be hearing this. His rhetoric sounds like he's more in the center. The president's budget will double the debt over 10 years. The president's budget will spend, get this, $46 trillion, $46 trillion over 10 years. The president's budget, after we thought they understood that raising taxes in a recession was a bad idea, the president's budget will increase taxes by $1.5 trillion. It, it is just, he did not get the message. The only message he's going to get is in 2012 if we send him back to Chicago. Well, what, what do you think the chances are of your serious budget cutting legislation as opposed to that small stuff that your colleagues in the House are thinking about getting into the budget? Well, what I keep trying to tell people is the reason you have to do more is because all of this debt that's going to be added. You know, the, uh, I think President Obama's budget will add $13 trillion over 10 years or about $4 trillion over five years. The Republican budget, even if they boost it up to about $100 billion this year, will still add nearly $3 trillion over five years. The problem is, is that things are out of control. And unless you accept that you can have federal government doing less things, like unless you accept the philosophic principle that education should be handled by the states and localities, right. they don't know where to cut. Right. Or unless you accept the principle that military spending will have to be cut, they don't have enough money to cut. They can cut all of the non-military discretionary spending and not balance the budget. Wow. Senator Paul, it's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge.